Hello and welcome to this video on Qt animation and in this video uh, we're going to use the animation framework from Qt that's right there's uh, actually a framework inside another framework the animation framework and uh, it's, it's not the only one there's also a graphics framework and other, other stuff inside the Qt. Qt is like a whole universe and we're just touching one of the planets anyway we're gonna use the animation framework and the reason why I'm saying that is because we can animate using a Q timeline and uh, we can animate uh, using um, graphics item animation uh, we are gonna uh, use property animation in this video which is a sub subclass of Q variant animation and we're gonna touch on the Q abstract animation as well animation groups animating CSS properties. We're gonna do a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna do this uh, by chapters so that uh, we could, yeah, it's gonna be a long video. We'll do the following behavior. We hover the button, the button uh, expands a little bit with a little animation. And then we, when we leave the button, it, it goes back to normal. As you probably can see, this is a bit different from the previous example, just simply because I added some style sheets uh, here. And that's basically all I did just to make these uh, not so bright when we open that up just to recap we are using these versions and these are our folder structure right now we got our main pie where we importing everything we're importing main GUI which is this file right here which has our GUI that we were just looking at our UI and we have my widgets which uh, is important to through the UI which is a subclass of the of our jump button and if I press F7 here this is what we have so I'm gonna hide the folder structure right now I close this version check and what I'm doing what I'll do so that you know what's happening in the background is I'll control click this main pie here it's because uh, I'm gonna run this file but I'm gonna make changes to this file so every time uh, I'll run I'm not running this I'm running this one this one here okay so I'm saying that because now I'm gonna expand this to another monitor and you won't be able to see it okay so first I'm gonna start by importing uh, Q property animation so it takes um, two arguments and the first argument is what are we gonna animate in this case is self because Q push button is what we're going to animate and by the way this needs to be a child of a subclass of Q object and yes Q push button is a subclass of Q widget and Q widget is a subclass of Q uh, of Q object so uh, and then we're going to choose what property are we going to animate because this is after all Q property animation so the way we're doing this you see this B here if you're not familiar with Python what I'm what I'm saying is that this is a byte is in, in bytes Qt wants a byte array. Uh, we could you, we could potentially say that we could do that import Q byte array and say that this is a Q byte array, and that but we don't necessarily need that. Qt is smart enough to receive a byte objects from Python. We're set to go. We, I'm setting self anim so as our Q property animation object so that I can access it and do a bunch of stuff with it. We can set the duration using set duration and the default is 250 milliseconds. This is in milliseconds. Well, let's say two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. Now we gotta think, when are we going to animate this? And for that, I'm gonna use the enter event. Remember we used, we catch the enter event with a with an event filter. We install the event filter and we catch the event, the enter event with the event filter on the last uh, video this time because we're subclassing we can use the enter event here in the subclass of q push button and this enter event if i go into the quick q widget in the documentation you can see that the enter event is here okay and there's a lot more events here that you can can use uh, it's a virtual function in this case so here in the, en in the enter event i'm just going to say self anim start so that we start the event uh, we start the animation uh, but of course we need to give it first a start value and an end value so start value end value uh, I chose geometry why did I chose geometry let me show you really quickly 
if we go into Qt Designer and I select my button and I go all the way up here, we know that it's a child of Q object and it's a child of uh, Q widget, a subclass, sorry, a subclass. And we have this property geometry. So we are animating properties. This is the property editor and this is geometry, one of the properties. And what geometry is, is basically it's uh, called a, it's a Q rect. Uh, if you don't know what a Q rect is, uh, let me show you really quickly. Okay, a Q rect right here. It's basically a geometrical shape. Um, there's no representation of it. It's just a square basically with uh, uh, top, left, right and bottom uh, uh, spacing. Okay, um, <laughs> okay, this is a Q rect. Uh, we use it a lot in the graphics framework and uh, well, and we're gonna use it here as well. Now the Q rect has a bunch of different stuff. Uh, it has width, X, Y, set X, um, set Y, blah, blah, blah. And one thing I, I wanted to, to, to tell you, we got this translate, for example. Every time you see a DX, DY in Qt, that means a difference X and difference Y. So this translate here, if I wanted to set a translation, uh, and I said 10, for the X and 10 for the Y, that would mean that it would move by 10 pixels, okay? That's important, you need to know that further on. And here, uh, f this rect, it has a, a bunch of stuff, it, in, it has also the Python uh, Dunder methods uh, for add, uh, equals, and uh, etc. So we're gonna use this guy to, 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 to animate uh, stuff. So, going back to geometry, here in Q widget, if I look for geometry, you can see that we have uh, geometry, and this is a property. It's I know Qt is a bit complicated because it's coming from C++, and properties, all the properties that it has uh, transcribed to, to, to compiled to to Python, uh, they always have a getter and a setter. So we have geometry here, and we probably have somewhere in here set geometry. Uh, there's some other stuff. Set geometry right there. Okay, so that, that's important. And if I click on geometry, if I click on geometry, I wanna click on it and see what's up, what's up in here. What's up is that geometry gives me a Q rect. So that's what we're gonna use. And we can see that Q rect is a child, it's coming from QT core, okay? So in here for the start value, we can say, well, what start value is gonna be whatever your geometry is. And we can say self geometry. That's the start value. And remember, this gives us a Q rect. So if, if it gives us a Q rect, and I might as well do it differently here, I'm gonna put this into a variable, place it in there. That's the one we wanna start at. And then I can do this. I can say rect, and now I have access to all the rect stuff, okay, that we're looking at. And I'm gonna tell this rect that I got from self geometry to translate by 30 pixels positive and you know what 30 pixels negative so this would be the x and this would be the y so i'm moving the y up and the x to the right by 30 pixels doing this right here i'm just translating a rect i'm not translating the geometry if i wanted to translate the, the geometry directly i would have to do this i would have to set the geometry again because by changing the rect that i got from there I'm not actually doing anything. I would have to do this. So because I'm not changing the geometry, I can now pass in this changed rect into the end value of our animation. Let's recap really quickly. We're creating a property animation and we're saying that the prop, uh, property that we're gonna change is geometry. We are setting a duration of two seconds. We are getting our rect from the self geometry we are setting the start value of the animation to be that rect, so whatever the geometry is, uh, to be that rect. And then uh, we are translating that by 30 pixels to the right, 30 pixels up. And then uh, finally, self anim, we're setting the end value to that changed rect. Press F7 on the other side. Let's see what happens. What the? Whoa, what, what was that? <laughs> Where is my button? Right. Let me explain what happened. What happened is that I'm doing this in the init function. Okay, 
we are still inside the init function. And the init function runs when this object is called. So in my UI, when is this object called? Let's investigate. Let me open my UI and we'll see it. Okay, the object is called here. And then the geometry is set. And this is coming from Qt Designer because we changed the geometry of the object there. And we made it go to X256 to Y204, the width is 130 and the height is 130, uh, 53. And that is what we did here by changing the geometry. Here we go. This is the Q rect that we're talking about. X, Y, width, height. Okay, that's the Q rect. What happens is that I can't really do stuff like that in the init function. You have to remember this because otherwise, sooner or later, this is going to fry your brain and I don't want that to happen. So now you know, so avoid frying your brain. <laughs> so what that means is that we actually need this to be in the enter, enter event. Now, if we place it in the enter event, this is only going to be processed when we enter. And when we enter, and now if I run it, there we go. Up by 30 pixels, and to the right by 30 pixels, within 2 seconds. I don't know about you, but to me that was probably one of the crappiest animations I've ever seen in my life. So in order to make our animation look decent, we're going to need something like an easing curve, because right now it's linear. And linear is just 0 to 1 at the same velocity at the same time. So we're going to get a Q easing curve. And if we look at the documentation uh, and look for a Q easing curve, you can see a bunch of them here. And we have a graphical representation, which is awesome. Right? There's a lot of them. A lot. Yeah. And you can even create your custom... Uh, easing curves if you like uh, to fry your, your your brain on that <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's a bit complicated but it's it's possible it's there if you like it so the easing curve that I chose is going to be an out elastic so this is how we do it we set the easing curve Q easing curve out elastic and we can do this in the init there's no problem uh, only uh, the enter event is the one that we're worried about. So doing that and obviously changing the time, this is too fast. Uh, the default, uh, like I said, is 200 and... was it 250? I think it's 150. Let's see how it looks like now. Whoa! That's cool. And it keeps happening. Oi, 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 oi. It's gone. Right. <laughs> of course, we, we can't leave it like that. We need uh, some um, some logic to make this work. Now, uh, y widget has a lot. A Q widget has a lot more stuff than just geometry. You could you could use potentially use pause, uh, and that would give to to create like give it a absolute position. Uh, you could use size to change the size of it directly. So let's let's try size. So I'm importing Q size because I'm going to need Q size down here. Here I'm just getting size, and here I'm getting um, I'm creating Q size, and I'm saying now I want you to be 200 pixels wide, and 200 pixels uh, high. F7, boop. That's what happens. <laughs> it stays in the same place, right? But we don't want that uh, that to happen. We need to expand around itself, and for that we're going to use margins. So we we saw that Q rect as a dunder add method. And that add method takes margins. Okay, so if I press margins here, margins is left, top, right, bottom. Okay, dunder method, Q margins. What can we do with that? Well, we can do this. We can say that the rect uh, plus equals Q margins. So obviously, I'm going to have to uh, get Q margins first. And that's also coming from here, from Qt Core. Let's get Q margins. And now we can say that, you know what, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 pixels left, uh, 10 pixels top, 10 pixels right, 10 pixels bottom. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to increase those margins by 10 pixels in every direction. So if I now try this, boop, 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 
Okay, so we need logic to to keep this from <laughs> from increasing, and we need it to go back uh, to decrease. So we know we're gonna need another event. I'll let you think about that for two seconds. Okay, two seconds has passed. What is the event? Yes, you're right. We need a leave event. Another thing we're gonna need, and you probably guessed it, is we're gonna needs a boolean that tells us if the animation is playing or it's stopped and we could create something like that but luckily we have that already we have state in Q abstract animation uh, not directly in Q property animation but here in Q abstract animation which is you can see that Q property is one of the inherited uh, classes so this guy has pause, resume, set current time, state changed, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we can use that, the state here. If I press on it, you can see it's a, a type state. And so basically what I can say is if um, I can do an if else statement up here and say if anim.state equals self anim which is basically i'm saying self anim is a q property animation but because it's a subclass of q abstract animation uh, we can call that and get that state stopped uh, enum so we're making sure that the it's uh, the animation is not playing before we do this stuff right here and of course uh self anim start as well in there in that if statement this is so that uh, when we're moving in and out of the the button the button doesn't start the animation again set direction in q abstract animation i believe yes set direction right there and we get direction as well we can ask where where the direction is and really quickly i, I want to show you actually where i got the state from here we go it should take me here and it didn't so we can see if it's stopped if it's paused uh, and if it's running and that's that's what I used there so if we press set direction set direction is direction in here and if I press that I can see that it's forward or backward so we're gonna use that so when I leave when my mouse leaves the button I'm going to set the direction to be backward so the, the animation starts moving backward and when I enter the button I want the direction to be forward if it's not already set I want it to set, set it forward okay one other thing obviously when I leave if the animation state is stopped I want it to start this is because if I put my mouse in there and the animation goes to the end it stops there so when I leave I want it to start again Boop. Boop. okay and if I go really fast and if I wait for the animation to end it should work either way let's put this uh, this is the test that we really need to do is place this button inside the layout and change the position of the button by moving, uh, changing the, the size of the window and see if everything goes according to plan, even if we do that. So let's check that out. And I'm gonna take this, uh, this opportunity to talk a bit about layouts here in Qt Designer. One thing, uh, we already had prom promoted this guy. So I can click this guy, Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, and I got a bunch of buttons, all right? And I'm just going to put them in an order that's going to be good for our grid. Now, the reason why I could do this, Control c Control v like that, it's because we don't have a layout set yet on the parent, on the parent of these buttons. That's why. Because if we had one, it would not let me paste. I would actually have to come in here, layout, and come into, oh my god, layout, and come into break layout, right? Okay, either way, I'm gonna set the layout of a grid and they're all in that grid instantaneously because they were, they had a, a good position for that. Now, if I do a control R really quickly just to see the behavior, that's what's gonna happen. Now, I don't want 
my window to be smaller than that and to that I can to do that I can come here to my my guy and I know that let me just place this so we know that what the size is I don't want it to be smaller than this because the buttons are gonna grow so this is as small as it's gonna get so I'm gonna change the size policy of the widget by coming here to width copying that value coming here to minimum size that's the minimum and then I'll grab the height and that's the minimum height okay I'll save that let's try it okay save that and now we go back to our to our example and now we have buttons that look really cool and and that didn't go <laughs> that didn't go very well but all right so yeah we're moving it and uh, it's perfect it's working nice okay so I'll pa I paused the video and I came in here to to cute designer and I to this button I added uh, an icon I created a QRC file so now we have a QRC file with this image in there and to this guy I added an, uh, an icon with that image uh, by clicking here in add resource to the icon and also I changed the icon to be 32 pixels by 32 and to this other guy I uh, added a style sheet just a simple border image with that image that we added right there this is so that in the next uh, few examples we can check what, what the behavior of that right now we're gonna check out uh, Q graphics effect and we are going to animate the Q graphics effect you can see that we have different effects that's the original image and we have the blur effect we have the colorize effect and we have the opacity effect and the drop shadow effect remember we talked about colorizing a uh, tint using tint we well we can use tint on um, black icons uh, but obviously we need to use this colorize uh, graphics effect uh, graphics effect before I move on from here uh, this is we're looking at graphics effect itself and then inside the graphics effect uh, the subclasses are the ones that I've just showed you so if I go into colorize for example we can see that we have color color change and we can change the strength of the the colorization and that's what we're going to use we're going to use a colorize effect and we're going to change his strength right now uh, with animation okay let's quickly go over this so now I'm importing Q graphics colorize effect like who you're seeing there I'm also importing Q color so that I can set the color to our effect and what I'm going what I'm doing here is I'm saying self color effect I'm creating a new very uh, new property here uh, attribute and I'm initializing that uh, Q graphics colorize effect by passing in self as the the argument so the parent is self then I'm coming down here and I'm setting the strength to zero because we want to start with strength of zero which means there's no effect uh, uh, being applied and a strength of one would be full effect being applied so it's a float from zero to one then I'm setting the color to the effect because otherwise uh, the default color for Q graphics uh, colorize effect is this color here, this bluish color. So I'm setting the color to be a red color. Um, and then down here I'm saying self set graphics effect because I haven't set the graphics effect yet to be this new color effect. Okay. Now for the Q property animation, this time instead of animating self, animating the button, I'm animating the effect okay so the effect is applied to the button and I'm animating the effect and the parameter that I'm choosing is strength okay so it's this I'm setting it here and then I'm animating it here with property duration one second and it's pretty much everything is is, is like we we saw in the previous example and I'm saying that the start value for our animation is zero and the end value is one is it's going to colorize when I place uh, it's gonna change the strength to one the, the color we set is red so it's gonna bring it to red okay now the reason I have images here is that we can see what happens with black with white and with different colors so if I come here to button and this one will show us better so as you can see if you want 
to change colors uh, using colorize your best bet is going to black because black is really gonna reflect whatever colors you use in the colorize effect because I'm going to share this file with you I want to to see uh, roughly how it is so up here we got our first example and then down here is the example we just saw I'm gonna comment that out and now let's let's look at grouping I have an example here for grouping let's check that out so we use uh, grouping when we're doing more t animating more than one thing one thing or have different animation so we can use grouping the grouping uh, the animation group uh, inherits from Q abstract animation so any Q abstract method is available to us for the animation group also what's available to us is add animation animation at so we can figure out what animations are inside the group and this is the the super class for for the group and then inside this this class we still have sequential animation and parallel animation so by the names you can figure out what it is I mean sequential animation is basically one animation after the other plays one af after the other and uh, the parallel animation is that plays all the animations at at the same time so we're going to use for this one we're going to use parallel uh, animation and I'm importing it right here as you can see it's time to get off screen but it's right there parallel animation and I am a, I'm using our previous margins uh, example uh, combined with the, with the colorize effect example so we got our color effect and our color animation here set duration blah 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 and our margins animation and then down here we are setting creating the group the Q parallel animation group uh, the father is self and the, the father <laughs> the parent is self and then we adding uh, the, our color animation that we we're just looking at and our previous margins animation to the group so down here in the enter event instead of uh, doing uh, setting the direction for each one of the animations separately we are actually setting the direction for the group because the group uh, is a uh, uh, inherits from Q abstract animation and this is one of the methods from Q abstract animation the same thing goes down here the state is also a method from Q abstract animation that's why we're using uh, the state the, the if else statement here you looking at the state now down here instead of starting each animation separately we just start the group as a whole Okay, so it, it grouping, it, it's similar to the, the, the button group like we, see, we saw on previous chapters. Same thing down here, uh, when we leave, oh, we set the direction of the group and we check and we start the group here. Okay, so now we're doing these two animations. Okay. And you can have different times for, for the animations. As you can see, one of them is 250 milliseconds which is the margins, the, the popping up of the button and the color is one second okay, I'm just going to comment this grouping example out and now let's look at colorizing using color because first, the first example of using the graphics we were using strength this time I'm gonna comment out strength and we're gonna lose that, look at color how do we animate color? because color has different has not just one value but it has four values if it's an RGBA color so that's red green blue and this is the alpha so 255 alpha means fully visible uh, zero alpha would be fully opaque or invisible so now instead of strength we are animating the color and down here as you can see I'm using a Q color as a start value and this is going to be a green color because red is zero and blue is zero and then the end value is going to be a red color with a little bit of uh, green in there but it's basically a red color okay so I did set the color to green as at start that's why everything is like this as you can see it goes from one color to the other now I'm placing the color in the enter event just to keep things consistent across the examples but obviously we would need to place color uh, do this in the enter event we could do this in the initial initialize function this way we're saving up resources we don't have to do that all the, all the time every time we enter 
uh, entering here it's mainly because of uh, positioning so uh, another thing I want to show you is uh, set key value at okay so we, with set key value at we can uh, scrap the start set start value and set uh, end value and we can have more control over the animation so what's going on here is that I'm setting a key value at the, the beginning of animation looking at the animation as a timeline the animation starts at 0 and ends at 1 at, that we have here in between is float values so I'm saying at the beginning of the animation give me this color so 0 to 550 five, that's gonna be a green color and then when you get almost to the end of the animation at 0 0.8 which it's 80 percent of the animation I want you to move on to a red color okay red green blue okay and then when you get at the end of the animation I want you to give me a blue color okay and the result is this red blue red green okay so this is a way that we have to control animations in a more precise manner and for color this is is great okay so I'm gonna move on to the next example here okay now I'm gonna use a uh, strengthened color because uh, this way we have a bit more control uh, now we have three animations the color animation the margins animation and the color strength animation we are animating the color we are animating the strength and down here I can bring these up actually right, I just brought them up here so start value and value and you know what I'm gonna grab the, the other piece of the other example and paste it here so we use key value for the color instead so animating the color animating the strength and uh, three animations here and I wanted to look at um, we can do this here and see the result I have no idea what's gonna happen but okay here we go right so animating a bunch of different stuff I just want you to show you uh, how the sequ sequential works Q sequential group instead so popping and the, the, the sequence is, is how uh, is determined when you add them so here in, I'm saying that the first thing happening is the color and then the margins and then the color strength if uh, for example I change their order here and then the, the order is obviously going to change so we're doing margins, color, margins, color and strength okay custom property this is a good one what if I want a, a custom property in my animation and this is this is something you can take to other other stuff not just animation uh, this is I'm gonna show you how you create a property um, and it's a QT property okay a cute property so this is I have too much stuff going on here so I'm just gonna do this okay so it's property and it's coming from cute core that we're gonna need that all right if you're this is for pi side for pi side you use property for pi cute you use uh, pi cute property like that this is the value for our property actually so i'm going to say self color val val and that's our uh, the value for our property in this case i'm going to create a color we say at property and then we pass in the type of the object this uh, what class it is in this case it's q color if i was just doing a uh, an integer if I was just uh, animating an integer uh, using an integer for the property I would do that float or whatever so we say property and I'm gonna hide this so that we can see so we got the value of our property here we do add property we pass in the type of class that that property is all about the value of the property is all about then we define the name of the property this is the cute property name uh, we are inside a Q push button doesn't have a color property so we can use that and for this one this is the return this is like it's the getter the first one we do is the getter so it, it has to return the value of our property and that's going to be self color val right 
And then we need the setter. So we say at color, which is the name of the property that we're setting, at color dot setter. So this is the setter. This is how Qt is going to set this property. And we define it again with same name. Don't worry about it. And we pass in the value as an argument. And then all we do is we set our uh, our attribute color val to whatever value is getting passed. And right now I'm just going to start by printing that value. Why is it going to print the value? Because we're creating an animation for self for us, and we're telling we're telling it to animate color, which is the property we just created. Okay, so for PyQt you need to use PyQt uh, property instead of just property. I also have the, the margins animation in here. Hope that's not confusing. But th that's what we're doing. And we're just printing that value. So I'm going to bring this up. And of course down here I have a start value of this Q color and an end value of this Q color. And uh, to keep things consistent I'm going to bring this up like the other examples. So as it animates, it's going to call this function and set the value. And the value is going to be in between the start value of color and the end value of color. And you're going to see what's happening here. So as I hover a button, you can see there, we get this from RGB. That's what's animating from a 0 to 1, animating those colors like that. Of course, it's not animating any colors because we're just printing out the value. If we want, and I have another print statement here, if we want to get red, green, uh, blue, alpha, we can say val, red, val, green, val, blue, val, alpha. Okay, And I'm just printing that in that fashion because what we get here is a form RGB and we can use these methods there. Okay, Now we got everything separate. So you see where I'm going with this. So this creating of pro uh, custom properties is, is a very powerful concept. Especially if you're doing um, widgets or things for other people, you can create your own cute properties like this, and which is amazing. And for animation, I mean, you can see the potential. You can create anything like that. All right, let's move on to the next example. This is a long video, but Watching this video, I, 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 there's a lot of videos out there that just quickly scratch the surface of animation. I don't want to do that. I want you guys to really understand so you have all the power in your hands. Okay, so palette is a concept that we haven't spoke about. We went straight into style sheets. We never spoke about palette, but uh, cute as uh, something called palette, and that's used to style your, your UI. The reason we haven't talked about it is because it's not as flexible as style sheets. And style sheets is usually the preferred uh, method of styling our UIs. But anyway, I'm going to show you uh, here uh, what happens with uh, animating, a how you can uh, animate palette properties. So the first thing you can see right here happening is that I'm, set I'm setting the style sheet to have a background of none. Uh, why? Because when I'm using palette, if I don't do this, Palette ain't gonna do anything. Another thing to, to so uh, here the color anime I'm setting self color here, which is our custom property that we created. Because if you are animating palettes, you need custom properties. We are grabbing our palette because every widget has a palette. Then we are setting a color to that palette, and I'm set, I'm, I'm choosing the background role. And then I'm setting that palette because it works a bit like the rect, like like I've t I've shown you. Changing this, the, the the color doesn't change the color on the palette. You need to after that apply it again to self. And then I'm doing auto fill background because I am trying to change the background. And the the result is obviously I remove the style sheet so it doesn't have a background. That's the result. And I'm just going to zoom in here to show you something. You can see the corner here, right? The corner is is grabbing the whole rect of the um, 
of the push button. And the push button is a Q, Q graphics rect item, which means it doesn't have um, rounded corners. For that, you needed a rounded rect item. And we, we're going to talk about those things when we get to the graphics um, framework. We can create, obviously, by overwriting the paint event, we can create a rect item. And we will see that in future uh, videos. But you can see right away that we have that issue right there. The corner is not... Um, uh, we have a corner popping out. If I didn't make the background none using style sheets, then I couldn't do... Uh, well, I, I can. I can, if you look, there's the, the, the background is getting set, it's popping up there in the little corner, right? But uh, because we have a style sheet with a background, we, we can't apply a palette on top of that. Well, we can, as you've seen, but you know what I mean. Yeah, and that brings us to style sheets. How do I animate style sheets? Oh, good question. Okay, so for style sheets, we obviously need custom properties. So we ha still have this color val, that's our uh, custom property value. And we're animating color. Uh, we're setting a color there like we did before. And what we're doing here inside of this setter, uh, let me bring this color anim up there like we have in the other examples first. And here in this statement, I'm using an F string so that I can use uh, I'm setting the style sheet using an F string here and saying background color and I'm using RGBA uh, because I'm even though I'm using RGB here that's not a problem so I'm using RGBA so I can have alpha as well so I could do an alpha there and that would change the alpha and then with this F, within this F string if you don't know how F strings work is anything that goes into these brackets can be a variable so I'm grabbing that red green blue and placing it inside of this background color of course because i'm setting style sheets all the only style the only style that we're going to have inside this button is going to be background color and in the next example we're going to see how we can do different style sheets but right now let's look at what happens there we go so now we're changing color using style sheets and what happens in this button? This button has a style sheet of an image, okay? So because I set the style sheet, the image just popped and went away, and it's not coming back, okay? It's got a border image, so I, I would have to do some logic there to, to be able to not overwrite just the background color, but to grab that image, that border image a style, and add it. So we'll see that on the next example. But that's how we can animate CSS properties, by using our own properties. Let's check out the next example. Okay, style sheet grouping. And here is where I am going to use uh, what I was just talking about. So because style sheets are, are in a string form, I have a little example here, just below that one, of string manipulation. And what I'm doing, this is very basic. I'm sure you guys can figure out something uh, that is better, but this is one way we can go about it. So in style sheets, uh, if you're not familiar with it, we can create a comment using this syntax. If I come back here to my cute designer and I'll, I'll show you really quickly. So if I wanted to comment out something here, I could use that syntax, you can see that in action okay so that's commented out it's not going to work and that's what i'm doing here i'm saying i'm putting a comment here just saying that color starts here and i could say background color or something like that and then i'm saying that padding starts here and then the end of the file is here or the end of the string is here and then here i'm grabbing the index of color and in, in this case i'm trying to get padding i'm grabbing the index of color uh, and I'm saying that's the start, that's where I want to start grabbing this um, string. And the end is when it gets to padding. Okay, so I am actually grabbing these, these here. Okay, and I'll show you that. And then in here I'm saying that all is current, which is that string right there that we're looking up there. It's current. 
start to end. Let me just print out all. Okay, so that's all. That's all we're getting. We, we From start to end, from color to padding. And this is what we're getting. So basically, this part. Okay? And then I'm saying that current, or let's say result, equals the current, which is that full string up there. And we're going to replace that with... Uh, we're going to replace everything we see in all, which is this down here, with this string. And if I print out the result now, you can see that we successfully changed the string. Now the, the format of the, uh, the line breaks, I could, I could add a line break here as well by doing that and probably another one here. So, and now if I print it out, it's it's a bit more similar to what it was, but we're not caring about line breaks uh, using uh, what we're doing. We're just caring about changing that value. And and this is one way of doing it. This is the way I've chosen to do it. You can figure out some better ways to do it, guys. But this is how we have to go about it. We have to, to manipulate the string, the style sheet string, and then reset it again, place it back in there. So I'm just going to comment this out. You guys can have a play with that if you like. And let's uncomment grouping of style sheets here. Okay, so here we go. Here's our string. We're setting the style sheet to be that string. Of course, you could set a style sheet like this in a cute designer and then uh, you don't wouldn't have to do it here. But that's up to you. And then here we're going to have a custom property for uh, color. And this is the value for that property. And I should actually say this is custom property value. And then obviously we are animating that. We're doing the same for padding. We got padding value and we're animating padding here with the start value of 10 pixels of padding to 20 pixels of padding. As you can see there, that's what our start. And that's our start color. Uh, this color is just what we had, that orangey color in, in the UI. And we're adding that to an animation group. And here we are with our color uh, property that we had before. Color property right there. And here we're doing the string kung fu, right? So current self style sheets. We start at color, we end at padding. All is start and end here. And this is uh, uh, index. Uh, uh, strings work like array uh, lists in Python. That's why we can do that. I didn't mention that. And then here, here uh, we're using a F string like we did before to set the red, green, blue, and alpha. Okay, and that's for our uh, color property. Then we got another property here, and this time is a float, as you can see. And we're setting the padding, and uh, that's our padding property. And we're doing that kung fu here as well, where we go from padding to end which if i go back here here you can see we we're catching this right catching that and we're changing uh of course uh the new one is the replaced version here we go sorry uh the new one is the replaced version where we say padding now it's uh the value that we are getting when that property is being set by the q property animation and then we start the style sheet so we're doing two at the same time. And I am using parallel. Uh, it's a parallel animation here, okay? I got property in here as well. Right, so that's what we're doing. We're animating the padding and, um, and the color. And I chose padding for a reason, because I wanted to show you what happens when we animate the CSS property of padding. So let me just bring this up because we're gonna have errors. Okay, so you can see what's happening there, right? Because we, because it's CSS pad, uh, padding property, it influences our layout, our grid layout. All right. So if that's the behavior you want, if you're doing some kind of game or something, that would be cool. Uh, but uh, keep that in mind. Uh, if we do padding here, uh, it, it's going to do that. And you can check that when you're uh, in Qt Designer, uh, changing those properties, see what happens with the layouts before you start animating. All right. And now one thing I want to do is, when I move over this button, I get an error here. 
and why do I get that error? Because that button already has an inline style sheet, and it's is is looking for something that it's not in there, that was set before. All right, even though I'm setting style sheet here, that button has a border image property, so it gets into conflicts here. Okay. But anyway, that's how you would animate uh, multiple uh, CSS properties. Uh, that's one way of doing it. I mean, you, you can have a float property here and then multiply. Uh, I mean, um, if you want to do margin and padding and all that at the same time, you could do that by setting a, sh a style sheet and just grabbing that value and multiplying by something. So that's something to think about. I'm going to go on to our final example here something to keep in mind here is when you're doing style sheets and qt properties at the same time in groups the behavior might not be what you expect so what we're doing here is we're animating the color pro property with style sheets so here's our color property and setting style sheets like we did in the previous example and uh again i'm going to pull this up up here so st uh, we're animating style sheets and we are also animating our margins effect and we're using a parallel animation here so yeah basically that's it let's see what happens we should have the button popping and the color changing at the same time yeah that's right it doesn't pop now I could come back here and try and change the timing and that will affect it change the order of the animations that will affect it as well so if I say that my color is 200 milliseconds smaller than my jump and I want my uh, jump animation which is the margin animation to happen first now it works but maybe I, I don't want it one to be smaller than the other but I wanted to show you this because so that you are aware that combining style sheets animations with other animations property animations might produce weird results so I'm going to comment this out and I'll share this this code with you guys because it's a lot of stuff and you can go over it and check it out and I'll uncomment our first example so that uh, when we run it it goes back to what we had okay so I know this has been a mega huge <laughs> video but uh, this way you are uh, aware of a lot of the um, caveats that are in uh, animation using QProperty animation. In the next video we're going to look at path animation so animating something over a path and possibly also animating the the interface. I know there's a lot of videos out there how you animate uh, panels and uh, uh, some other widgets and stuff but I, I might go over that as well. So I'll see you in the next video I hope you enjoyed this and this has helped you on your journey to Qt and that's it see you.